Hi guys, and welcome back to a new episode with me, the Omega Enthusiast. This episode, I will be restoring this 1965 Seiko Seahorse date. This is an automatic watch as indicated on the dial. Throughout this video, I will be pointing out a few things to educate my viewers. I have not worked on a Seiko watch for over a decade, so this will be a fun restoration for me at the very least. Hope you guys will enjoy this video and make sure to hit on that thumbs up button below. It will help this channel a lot. And for anyone who is new to this channel, make sure to hit on that subscribe button as well. This will be the only channel on YouTube that will teach you a lot about vintage watches. Anyhow, back to this Seiko watch. As you can see, the case will need some cleaning. The watch makes a scratching noise inside, so it could be a rotor issue. The watch is not working. Uh, hopefully nothing is broken inside. The crystal is cracked and will need a new replacement. The crown is loose and will unscrew out of the case, which will need to be tightened back onto the stem. So let us get started. The very first thing is to get inside the watch. To do so, I'll need this JAXA tool to unscrew the case back. Inside the case back, you'll see the model number. With this number, you'll be able to order parts for this watch. The first thing that I notice on the movement is a screw has fallen out. And that screw is the case clamp screw. I can see one in here, and this is the one that came out. And that's the reason for that scratching noise that I mentioned earlier. Before I can remove the movement out of this case, I will have to unscrew this automatic weight screw in order to remove the automatic weights. Next, I'll have to remove the stem and crown. I'll need a pin vise to tighten the stem back onto the crown. Time to remove the remaining case clamp screw on the movement. Before I can remove the movement holder, I will have to remove this case gasket, which I will have to replace later on. This here is the case movement holder. Once I remove this piece, I can just flip over and the movement and the dial will just come right out. As you can see, the crystal is very scratched and there's a crack as well, so I will definitely need a replacement. The good news is the dial appears to be in excellent condition. Now it's time to tighten the stem back onto the crown with this pin vise. The black piece on the crown is called the crown gasket, which I will have to replace later on. I notice the dial is loose on one side, as you can see. This is a sign that the dial feed screw is missing. Before I can get started, I will have to put back the crown in order to set the time and remove those hands. There are two dial feed screws on the watch. One is missing, so I only have to unscrew this one in order to remove the dial. Once the dial has been removed, make sure to screw back the dial feed screw. You can use a crystal press to remove the crystal, or you can use a knife to pop open the bezel and remove the crystal. Once you have removed the crystal, you'll be able to remove this minute track ring, and the case will just go into the ultrasonic cleaner. Now it's time to work on the movement. First thing I'll do is remove the owl wheel. And then I'll set the movement onto the movement holder. In order for me to remove this date disc plate, there are three screws which I have to unscrew first.
Here you can see there's a spring. You have to be very careful when removing parts uh, from the date feature because you don't want to slip and that spring will fly right off. This here is the date dropping wheel, which allows you to advance the date. Underneath this plate, there are the minute wheel and the setting wheel. Next, I'll need to remove the yoke cover and the setting lever. This right here is the yoke cover. There's only one screw that's holding it down. Then it's time to remove the setting lever, which is the piece that holds the stem. Removing this cannon pinion will be the last thing to do on the dial side. Now it's time to figure out why this watch is not working. First thing I'll have to do is remove the balance wheel and the balance bridge. So my guess initially, why the watch is not working could be the dial feed screw that is missing could be inside the watch. And that is exactly correct. As you can see, I just pulled it out from the train system. And now it's time to set it back onto the right place. This is a very common issue, which is why when you are tightening the screw, make sure to tighten it very good, or else this can happen again in the future. Hopefully that was the main issue why the watch has stopped. Now I can move on and remove the automatic system. The automatic bridge will consist of two main parts. One is the transmission wheel, which I've just removed, and the other parts is under this uh, plate, which is called the paw lever with jewel. This movement has a lot of dirt, which will require a lot of cleaning. Unlike a Swiss movement, this automatic Seiko movement does not come with a crown wheel or a winding wheel, so I cannot release the mainspring energy that way. In order to do so, I will have to remove the pallet bridge and the pallet fork. Once all the energy has been released, I can now remove the ratchet wheel, which is this wheel right here. And I can remove the barrel bridge next. There are two screws. And after removing the barrel bridge, I can remove the barrel right underneath and take out the mainspring. But before I do that, let me unscrew the train wheel bridge screws as well. This here is the barrel bridge. And then I will remove the train wheel bridge. This is the sweep second wheel with pinion. And then this is the third wheel. And this is the escape wheel. In order to remove the barrel, I will have to remove this click. Once I remove this click, I can remove the barrel. And then I will unscrew this screw from this plate in order to get to the uh, center wheel that I will remove last.
So since I am using a spinning type cleaning machine, uh, I will assemble back the uh, pallet and the pallet bridge along with the barrel and the barrel bridge and the train wheel bridge. Before I remove the mainspring, let's clean up the barrel first. I can't stress this enough, but in order to do a proper restoration job, you have to clean the mainspring before you put it into the cleaning machine. And you have to remove the mainspring in order to properly clean it and also check uh, the health on the mainspring. And for some reason, a lot of watchmaker tends to skip this step, which I do not know why, because this is a very important step that you do not want to skip. Time to put everything into the cleaning basket. As you can see, the movement will appear looking like new once it is out of the cleaning process. Since the Seiko watch just does not take a uh, regular uh, income block shock system, I will need this special tool in order to remove this shock system, which is called the KIF or KIF shock system. Applying the right type of lubrication and the correct amount of lubrication is very important as that can affect the performance of the watch. Before I assemble anything back onto the movement, I will always lubricate the upper and the lower cap jewel and then I will lubricate the pallet fork jewel as well.
So now that I've done lubricating the upper and lower cap jewel, it is time to lubricate the pallet fork jewel. And in order to assemble everything back, we'll have to go backward. I was able to date this watch using the serial number on the case back, which uh, dates this watch to August of 1965. The Seahorse model, which is one of the first automatic uh, waterproof Seiko watches, uh, I believe they were first introduced in 1961, and they are also referred to as the Japanese Seamaster. If you find an Omega Seamaster is out of your budget, then maybe you can consider a Seiko Seahorse. I think this watch is going to turn out very attractive. The movement that I am working on right now is a Seiko Caliper 7625A with 17 joule. It is an automatic movement with date feature. Once again, lubrication is highly important. This is how the watch can last for many more years. If you guys enjoyed my video, make sure to hit on that thumbs up button below. That will help this channel a lot. And if you would like to support my work, you can also become a Patreon for this channel. The link is in the description box below. And if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit on that subscribe button. And if possible, if you can share this video, that would uh, help a whole lot as well for this channel. When Seiko created this movement, they wanted to be 100% an automatic movement. Therefore, this movement does not have the crown wheel or the winding wheel. So you cannot hand wind this watch which means there's no, um, no way for you to boost start the watch by winding it. So you will have to depend on the automatic system by shaking it or uh, using the automatic winder overnight. And here you have it, the movement is now alive. So as you can see on this automatic Seiko movement, it uses ball bearing. So with the slightest wrist movement, it will be enough to wind the watch. If you guys have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. We're getting close to finish assembling this movement. Right now, I'm putting back the automatic bridge.
If you guys are planning to become a watchmaker, my recommendation is to take a course and also learn it at a watch repair shop using the right tools. I know some of you guys are upset with my restoration video because I do not case polish, redial, or relume. And the reason for that is to do a proper restoration job on a vintage watch, you have to avoid a case polish, redial, and relume. Otherwise, you will um, take away the, the value and, and also make the watch not that collectible. Before you can assemble the dial in the hands, make sure the date can advance. This is a three-piece case, as you can see, you have the body of the case, and then you have the bezel, and the case back. Make sure the case is clean, or else it would be pointless for you to service the movement and to stick it into a case that's not clean. Now, with regards to the um, minute track ring, as you can see on the back, there's a groove. And that groove is for you to align to uh, with this piece that's sticking out on the dial. So this is actually pretty smart uh, what Seiko did 
because I know on a lot of Swiss watches, they don't have this uh, groove here. So you would have to align it using your eyes. And right here will be the replacement crystal. Fitting the right size gasket and the right thickness is highly important. If you are just going to randomly select uh, the right size gasket but not the correct thickness, might as well not install a gasket onto the watch. That's it, now we're down to the final step, and that is to clean up the case back before closing it onto the watch. So there are two, two things that I dislike about this watch. One is that I cannot hand wind the watch because of the automatic system, the way Seiko did it. And the second thing is, notice how the crown is flush against the case. This crown is extremely difficult to pull out to set the time, especially if you have big uh, hands. So, uh, and the other thing is, when you try to set the time to set it clockwise, you would have to turn the watch upside down because uh, it's easier to turn the hands that way. If you're someone with a big hand, I would not recommend this Seiko Seahorse with the hidden crown for you. That's the end of this video. If you guys enjoy watching it, please support the channel by hitting on that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any of my future episodes. You can also support my work on Patreon. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. My website and Instagram links are also in the description box. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.